Hey everyone, my name is Andy. I'm from the Finding Value Finance channel. Today we've got back Andrew. Uh, what he's going to do is try to keep money in your pocket instead of it <laughs> leaving. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, one of the important things is obviously I focus a lot on investing and making money. Uh, we've talked about careers and jobs and stuff like that before. Uh, but the other side of it is also keeping money in your pockets. And I know Andrew mentioned before on one of our other videos uh, about how important it is to choose a significant other that has maybe the same goals or same outlook paradigm, however you want to say it, uh, on life. And when those things don't align, when, when you've got a, a, a saver and a spender uh, or, or something on the lines of that, um, things can go wrong pretty quick. Uh, I know we've seen some people uh, get divorced over the years, at least in my uh, age cohort. I know you guys, you're a lot younger than I am, mm -hmm. but, um, you know, just dis people disagreeing on how to handle finances, people disagreeing on, I'll say the core values of perhaps um, of what people value, just the core values that the person has. It could be political. It could be a whole bunch of different things. It could be financial, you know, finances and financial stuff. So Andrew, what, um, what are some things that you think are ultra important when looking for perhaps the, the right one or yeah. what kind of problems can you, can you get into? Because I know, yeah. I know a lot of people ask questions to you. Maybe the younger guys do now that yep. you're, you now know, that I'm 30 to uh, <laughs> get a little older. You're at 30. Ooh. <laughs> So what are some questions they ask and what's your opinions? Yep. Yeah. Where, where this kind of sparked was, um, again, you know, it's an investment, it's, it's still an investment topic, but you can't invest if you don't have money. Um, and, and so how this kind of started was we got a lot of younger guys at work, which is funny. We're here. Let me just finish. We got a lot of younger guys at work and now they'll ask the slightly older guys, right? Hey, I'm going, Hey, I just broke up with this girl or, Hey, I was dating this girl until I found this out. What do you think? What do you think? What do you think? And it's funny because, you know, if we, if we rewind seven years ago, that was me asking you those exact same questions. So it's funny mm -hmm. how the, I guess, the tables have turned, so to speak. But, um, and then it makes me think, okay, how do I, how do I answer these, these questions? And then how much things have changed in the last, you know, seven years when it comes to this topic um, and, or just debt in general? or money or how people spend or how people invest. And it, it's really made me think, you know, that how much money you make really doesn't matter if, if you don't have, you know, good, a good value system with your, your, your spouse or your wife or your girlfriend or whatever it is. And um, you just end up losing all your money. And then I start seeing it more often now, right? Now that I'm older and married, most of my friends groups are older and married. Right. That's just kind of the natural way of doing things. And so now you have one guy who you used to know, you know, five years ago, who was pretty cheap, um, you know, lived below his means. And then he gets married. And now it's like all of a sudden it's like now she it does at, appear at least that she spends a lot of money. And you're like, how is this guy going to invest? And then he kind of opens up to you and he's like, yeah, I don't know what to do. We just spend so much money. We're in debt. And I'm like, you and your wife make over 200 a year. What are you talking about? And those kinds of conversations are a lot more common now and also divorces, right? I think peak divorce is like what, 35? I think that's where most divorces happen. And so I, I still have a lot of friends in their mid thirties. I just had a friend tell me about two weeks ago that he's getting divorced. Uh, we kind of saw it coming, but he's financially ruined. I mean, absolutely ruined. There, there's no coming back. For, well, I don't want to say there's no coming back, but it's going to be very difficult for him to come back. And so I know we, we've talked about it a lot before because we're so, uh, I don't want to say cheap, but we're pretty frugal. And I know our wives are also really frugal as well. So th those align, that's aligned so well for the both of us. And I don't think most people get that, get that benefit from their spouse. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So what are some of the questions that maybe the younger guys are asking you? Cause right now I don't, I don't talk to too many younger guys, Yeah, couple, but um, what, what are they asking? What are some questions? You, you, it's weird because they're not too direct, right? Because because they know the answer. All these kids, all these young guys, they know the answer, right? 
You know what I mean? But they they don't want to answer it for themselves. It's like, yeah, she's got a uh, over a hundred grand in student loans, and but she still somehow has an Audi. And you're looking at that going, <laughs> bro, like. So what's friend, your opinion? You... So what's your opinion on a girl or guy entering a relationship with a bunch of debt? What's your opinion on that? Um, I. Oof. Well, which side am I on? Am I on the debt free side, or am I the guy? You're with debt? you're on the side that you, that you are, what you you are what you are right now. Oh so, yeah. Yep. I, I wouldn't. Would I you, wouldn't do it. Would you date a girl who's got fifty thousand dollars plus in debt? And so re- marry her. Yeah, yeah. Okay. How about I share a story? Five years ago, meeting my now wife. Right. She told me what university she went to. First thing I did was I looked it up. I looked at tuition and I'm like, oh my God, that is an expensive school. And I, you know, this was like maybe our fourth date or something. And so like a couple of dates later, I was like, I need to find a way to get this answer out of her without sounding, you know, like a socially inept idiot and just go, how much debt, student loan debt do you have? Cause that's obviously not appropriate. I don't, don't no one do that. I do not advise anyone to do that in your first five da- dates or anything <laughs> like that at all. You're going to lose the girl. <laughs> But it, it was some, somehow, you know, the conversation flowed and I, maybe I think we were talking about scholarships or something along those lines. And then she let it slip that scholarships and her grandparents paid her way through college. And I was like, oh, good. But it's funny because I did have a number in my mind at that age. My number today would have been higher because I have a lot more money. But at that age, I didn't have as much money. So my number in my head was 20 grand. I told myself, if she's got more than 20 grand, then I don't see myself having a long-term relationship with her because that's 20, that's, you might as well just take that 20 grand and own it. If you're going to marry her mm-hmm. now that that's, you know, a very quick and easy way of looking at it. The most important thing above all of that is how does she, you know, is she looking at it like that 20 grand is a disgusting painting in her house and she needs to get rid of it ASAP or is she looking at it going, ah, it's a pet. I'll keep it as long as I can. Oh, loans are paused. Who cares? Oh, Biden's going to forgive it. Who cares? If she's got that mentality, I would never, I would avoid it at all costs, at all costs. And and I know this is going to sound biased, right? We're two guys. So obviously almost everything we're going to say is she and her, but that's just, that's just the nature of the audience. Um, And probably most of the demographic of people that listen to your videos anyways, Mm -hmm. probably fall in that same bucket. Um, So these younger guys, I tell them the same thing. It's like, you got to come up. It sucks, but I mean, you kind of have to give yourself a value. Is it 10 grand or is it 200 grand? And you just got to stick with it and be like, that. that's where I'm comfortable. And if it's more than that, I really have to evaluate her ability to hate debt. I mean, I'm talking hate it, like regret the fact that I have it. Um, and if you don't have that mentality, I'm like, oof, you might want to reconsider that one, man. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So what are some other potential things that you see that could be problematic? Like, you know, I'm, I'm trying to think <clears throat> I haven't really been on the dating scene for a very long time. So I'm kind of, you know, way off. <laughs> oh, I, I got a good one. I got a what? good one. <laughs> so when I was dating my wife, uh, she had a roommate at the time. And anytime I visited her house or it was an apartment, two bedroom apartment, anytime I visited my wife in that two bedroom apartment, I would always show up in the apartment with an Amazon package. And people are going to ask, wait, what, what do you mean? What, what is this? What are you talking about? It was her roommate's Amazon package waiting at the door. Every day I showed up, she had multiple Amazon packages at her door. And I knew that girl's financial situation. She was a massive spender and it makes sense, right? I mean, I mean she basically bought out the whole warehouse by the time by the time we got married, right? <laughs> By the time my wife left left that apartment, it just seemed like you had Amazon packages stacked to the top. Someone was there delivering every day using Amazon Prime. It was almost like an addiction. And when I see that, I go, yeah, you need to avoid that. Oh, you know this girl? Open, <laughs> open up her recycle bin, see how many Amazon packages are in there. <laughs> if it's a ton, shut it and be like, oh, she's a spender. Uh, another, another one. I don't know why Amazon is such a good heuristic for this. It just really is. Another one. Uh, when I deployed two, no, three years ago, when I deployed my my boss at the time, his wife, who didn't work, um, he would log every morning, he would log in to Amazon 
and and uh, cancel her shipments. <laughs> We're on the other side of the world and he's logging into yeah. Amazon and he's canceling her shipments because she just spent like, and he would, he would call me over and he goes, look at this. You know, he's just cursing. He's like, I can't believe she's doing this. Like, look at this stuff. Why does she need this? Why does she need that? She already has three of those. And he's just going cancel, 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 mm-hmm. cancel. And I think that that level of spending, that's a problem guys. That's a problem. Guys do it too. Right. <laughs> guys. I've seen guys do it, whether it's cars yeah. or gu- mm-hmm. oh, guns guys do it all the time with guns. Um, yeah. but yeah, that's a problem. So what would you consider to be like the ideal type then? If, 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 so let's say I, I'm trying to make sure I stay on. Yeah. Topic well, here, yeah. Uh, ideal is hard. Team. Yeah. I, well, I mean, is. Um, like, so th- this is, this is what I look for. And I guess what I ended up yeah. with is someone who is moldable, so to speak, like the person I'm with, uh, she is, she, she's a, 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 a mirror reflection of what the per- the person she's with. So it, she would be a spender with a spender and a saver with a saver. So she yeah. kind of like molds to whatever the other, you know, the other person is. So. I, I thought that was fine. So I didn't right. have a, a problem with that. But how how would you know if the person's moldable though? Because you could be a spender and then turn into a saver depending on the mirror, you know, the the the, the other person may mirror what the other person is, if that makes sense. And I don't I, know if you've seen that too often. I have. <laughs> and it's usually when that person as a parent that they highly respect. I, that, that's what I've noticed. Where like the parent says jump, she jumps. They oh, say, okay. you're, you're not spending money on that. They don't. You're not buying that car. They don't. You are buying that car. They do. You, you see mm-hmm. what I'm saying? I, so that that's most mostly like, which is a, in a, my opinion is a green flag, right? It shows you have a healthy connection with your parents. That That's where I've seen that. I don't know if that's true for you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. I, I've thought about I, that one a lot too. Yeah. I'm also trying to think of other things that would be either uh, detrimental. Like I know you've got some statistics that you could share that could be pretty. Um, I don't know if it's there. I don't know if they're mind blowing or if they're just a, an eye catcher. Yeah. It's an eye catcher. And I think it's, but, it speaks to mm-hmm. where we are today. Um. Let me start with this first one. I just thought I'd point out that Morgan Stanley wrote a pretty good article about three years ago, and it was, it's called The Rise of the She Economy. So it's economy with the she out front. And what they're pointing out is that um, in this article, they're pointing out that future of money is going to be female-centric, um, mainly because of who who is the main purchaser in most households. The stat that they found was over 70% of purchases in a family are are determined by the um, the wife or the mom. And that even just expenditure in general between single men and single women, uh, single women are more likely to be spending more money. And so the reason why they wrote this article is because it's like, okay, in terms of an investment strategies, you should be investing around where um, women will most likely be spending their money. And you know that what, where they concluded was a lot of makeup industries or cosmetic stuff, clothing, that kind of things. Um, I took it a step further from observations I've made in my own life and go maybe pet stores. Mm-hmm. Is it because uh, one, one other conclusion that they have in here is that uh, for the first time ever in 2030, 50% of all women will be single without children, um, which has never happened before in the history of like any economy, I think, in any country. And so you take that and you go, okay, how are they going to but here's the thing. No one likes being alone. But then at the same time, when you're 40, you don't want to have roommates. So how do you fill that void? You get multiple dogs and cats. So you know, you... I was just thinking like, you know, I know my wife buys a lot of clothes for the kids and shoes and stuff like that. And, you know, I was kind of thinking like, yeah, I don't really spend that much on me. I mean, a little bit, but hardly anything. And then I got to me thinking even further. I'm like, man, if I was like, if it was just me, would my kids be like running around naked, <laughs> like with no clothes on? Because <laughs> we're all like, yeah, whatever. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it'll be fine. Put some 
put some uh you know some like uh boxes or whatever on them and let them run around just get a blanket <laughs> yeah. if you're cold you get a blanket on <laughs> yeah exactly exactly and, and you know that's one argument for why they say they make the most uh they spend the most um another example of that is do you remember that gillette commercial from geez like four years ago where it was a guy walking down the street and he looked at a girl and he was like he was thinking he wanted to go talk to her he made a, a inappropriate comment about her and then his buddy like grabbed and he was like hey man not cool and then it went to a couple of guys drinking beers and they made a comment and another guy was like hey man not cool and it was this weird kind of commercial about hey don't make comments about women walking by and at the very end it said gillette buy our razors and everyone was kind of going what did that have to do with razors that had nothing to do with razors and then everyone kept thinking too why why would gillette do this why would they single out almost 100 percent of their demographic which is men basically say that they're all predators but then at the same time expect men to buy their shape their razors it's reason why yes that's the reason why it's because when the spout, when the wife is, or the mom is going to the grocery store, she's buying the razors for her husband. And the rise of the she economy plays a role in that um, aspect. Um, and so how, how this is all related. So that's related to investment, right? Because um, I know it, we're mainly focused on a commodities, but that's just for the current market conditions in the current cycle. I mean, if this statistic is true, the 2030s might be the pet industry. I don't know. <laughs> um, yeah, cats are us. Yeah, cats are us. Dogs are us. <laughs> I mean, I've seen it too. I've got a lot of friends, right? And mm -hmm. it's, there's something about being single in your 30s that means you're buying a cat or dog. Um, another one too with student loans by gender. Um, so it's it says here 60% of student loans are owned by women. And their student loans tend to be more than men. So not only are 60% owned by women at an individual level, the average student loan debt is also higher with, with women. Not just that, they make less money. That was, remember that popular like 71 cents to the dollar thing? That was a big deal with mm -hmm. Hillary Clinton like six years ago. Um, that was debunked many times. It has to do with women staying home and being moms. But the point being is that if you're a single guy who's like 30 and maybe you're looking at a girl who's 27, statistically speaking, she's going to have a lot of student loans um, and she's going to have a occupation that might not necessarily be STEM related. It, it might be psychology or, or um, counseling or a teacher. Nurse. She's going to nurse. Nur oh, yeah, nurse is pretty, that's STEM, right? Medicine. But that, that's like the one exception I've noticed. I know like a, a whole bunch of people's wives who are nurses, a whole bunch. <laughs> yeah. It's good paying too, but those hours, I don't know about those hours. It's got to suck. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That, that's one of the ex occupational exceptions, but <clears throat> um, yeah. Having, I wish I could find the amount. Oh, here it is. Is it maybe 30 K it's looking around. They, they broke it down by race too, but it's, Oh yeah, here it is for, for white women, it's 31K. Hispanic women, it's 27K. So it's roughly around 30K. Mm -hmm. So like I said, I mean, if my if my target point when I was 25 was 20, I just eliminated the average woman out just because it's 30. Yeah, it, I, sounds, uh... it sounds shallow, but you kind of have to give yourself a, a starting point, a baseline. To think about things. Where, where I got kind of stuck... Um, when I was like looking and trying to see what I'd be compatible with, I have like a minimum, it's not really like a list or requirement. I just, there's certain things that I don't like. I don't like, um, like, I don't like pets because you get all the hair on you. I'm allergic to cats. So I'm like, I don't, I can't have, I don't want that. I don't want to be stuck in dog hair and stuff like that mm -hmm. myself. And then I'm not a big drinker. I don't like drugs. I don't do any of that stuff. Um, so like that limits the girls that are available. So if you start looking and you're like, I don't want a girl who's massively in debt. I don't want a girl who's, who wants like cats and dogs. I don't want a girl who, you know, does, does a lot of drinking or, or drugs or something like that. You know, I, I just took like the population and went 1% yeah. or a couple Num percent numbers game. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, I just took it down, you know, a, a ton. So 
And then if I'm, if I'm a saver and they have to be a saver, I mean, I'm, I'm down to like a few percent of, of the world <laughs> yep. or of the United States, maybe only a couple single digit percent or something like that. Uh, that's available that I would actually like try to go after. And then I know most guys, they, they go after looks, they go after, you know, looks is a, is an extension of fertility. I would say, um, you know, when they're the most attractive in this and that, but like, you know, I, I guess I have to, I look deeper than just that, uh, but I yeah, think that's where they to. all get into trouble. Yep. They all get in trouble there. And then I, I told I, a, I, mm-hmm. I was going to say, I told a guy, this was two days ago at work. Um, Cause we were, he's trying to buy a house right now. And he was like, well, well, how much did you put down? I'm like a lot more than 20%. And he goes, how did you do that, man? I'm like, well, I had a lot saved up. My wife has a lot saved up. And he goes, you know, that's kind of where I also thought about this topic too. Cause I was like, wait, did your wife have debt or anything? He goes, no, she, she came into our marriage with a lot of money for, for our age. Right. A lot of savings. And he goes, man, you got so lucky. Like how, that's like one in a hundred. How, how do you do that? And I go. And I was like, it's easy, man. You just got to ask out a hundred girls. <laughs> <laughs> and that's kind of, that's kind of the point though, is that he goes, no, you can't do that. And he goes, no, seriously, man. Like if that girl interests you, just go ask her out. And if she, what's the worst that's going to happen? She says no. Um, and then you learn from that mm-hmm. and maybe, you know, I mean, maybe you get better at it, but eventually you just ask out everyone and then you find that you'll find someone that's just extremely compatible and you go, Hey, that, you know, you narrowed it down from here to here, but you'll never get to this unless you ask out everyone here, figure out that they're no good. And then eventually it leads you to a person that you are very compatible with. Um, but yeah, I, I, it, you knew me when I was single. So you knew that everything you're saying was exactly what I experienced. Completely yeah. yeah. What, what, you, what, what you realize is like, you're compatible with like no one <laughs> or very small amount. Cause um, I hang out with a lot of just, you know, people that are friends with my wife or people that I see. And I'm like, I would say the vast majority is like, no, 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 no. I mean, it's all no. Like, it's not like I see a girl. I'm like, oh, she'd be kind of cool. Like potentially be cool to hang out with. Like if I was single, like if I were single. Oh yeah. Yeah. I know what you're talking about. But it's, it's like, I look at him. I'm like, man, I, nothing. Yeah. (laughs) I, yeah. I I wouldn't want to even be with them irrespective of how they look or whatever. Uh, And there's like little, little things too that, I just don't, I don't know. I don't really uh, care for. Well, I think another big one, mm -hmm. I was going to say another big one too is vehicles. Um, I've I've noticed this. It's like single ladies don't care about cars that much. They get married and they get the kids. Now all of a sudden they want the Lincoln SUV or the Cadillac. I'm not, I'm not sure why that happens. Uh, That's not happening to us. I know that definitely doesn't happen to you, (laughs) Mm -hmm. Um, but I've seen that happen to a lot of, my my friends and i think it's just um like if you care that much about your appearance so maybe that's another thing as a guy you look at her and you go okay she spends a lot of money on her um i guess like her brand if you will like how do i look in public if that's a very expensive purse very expensive shoes you know a rotation of 40 shoes and each one of those shoes costs 200 dollars the clothes, the coats, the purses, watches, jewelry, if all that kind of stuff, just know that that's going to extend into a car. It's going to extend into a home. You know what I mean? It's going to be like, Hey, it's, it, Oh, we live in a half a million dollar home in a nice part of the neighborhood. Not enough. I want the million dollar home at the top of the Hill with all the other rich people. So I can keep up with appearances, you know, the keeping up with the Joneses. Mm -hmm. You can gauge for that in your twenties. Because it's instead of keeping up with the Joneses, it's I need to keep up with the other twenty three year olds that I'm around. I need to keep up with the other twenty four year olds that I'm around. It's all the same. It's just mm-hmm. that once you get older, that keeping up with the Joneses, it just takes different phases of life. And you can see that happening from a young age. Even in high school, you can probably see that kind of stuff happen. <clears throat> yeah, the my, um... yeah. My wife never showed any of that stuff ever. And that's still true today. The, um, the weird thing that, that I have, or, or the way that I think about it is if a girl that let's say she's not working, but she's just spending all this money, it's kind of like, I'll, I'll, I'll say this. It's, it's a form of disrespect to the person who's working to some extent. 
if that makes sense. It's like, I don't yeah. care about your time. I'm going to do whatever I want. Boom. And then they just, just load it on you. And I think if they don't have that, if they have that form of respect for your time to some, to some degree, then later on, if you make a bunch or something, you just be like, whatever, do whatever you want. But it's, I think that also boils down to something like a, it's a form of respect to if they're not making a lot. So I would find it very hard. Like, let's say you get into a, a I'll say a, a relationship. You're over here. Like, let's say you're making the, the lion's share of the money uh, and she's making very little and you're early in the relationship. All of a sudden she just starts spending all your money too. And you're like, okay, that's weird. <laughs> yep. Like, how come you're not pulling your weight here if you're going to be doing all the spending? Like, I want to make sure you're pulling your weight if you're spending it all. Um, but I, I I don't know how I could, I don't think I could do very well with that. I just, I, I don't know. I can't. I got to pay myself first. I got to respect myself first. And and then I got to save it for myself. Like, that's how I look at it. It's not about like buying physical things to myself. It's about saving for my future and having my future self be happy about my current self. You know, That's a, yeah. Huh. So, so if a girl is like, "Oh, I just went in this relationship and they just spent all the money on the guy," I'm like, "That's a form of disrespect. Like, you don't care about him at all." Because if you cared about him, you'd be like, "Well, you know, how could I help you? Is there something I can do? Yeah. Is there, you know, how could we work together? If they if they're just come in and they just start spending all your crap, you're like, well, you don't care about me. You should leave. <laughs> Get yeah, out if, of there. If money if money equals time, she's spending your time. Correct. Yeah. Sure. Huh. That's it. I never thought about that. About way. Yeah, and I, know, I think I, God... so. This this is what got me in the beginning. If you want to know, yeah, um, she'd always show up early, always, always, never late, always early. And I was like, okay, she respects me and my time. Perfect. She always, oh, what do you want to do? I'll do, I'll do what you want to do. So very kind of agreeable. It's not we will do this, we will do that. You are going to come with me, and it's like, all right, time out, like. <laughs> you know so there's there's like a meeting in the middle every single time so respectful of time respectful of whatever meeting in the middle all of those things not not money hungry doesn't want to spend a whole bunch she she can spend if i want to she can pull back if i want to you know whatever she'll do whatever um i try to figure out what she likes make sure she is doing what she likes and that those things are paid for to make sure that she, you know, I have a respect for her too. Even if, even if I'm making all the money, she, she's got to do something. So it's, it's like coming to the middle and making it all work. If any person on one side just goes like and, and squashes the other person, that's a form of like massive disrespect. Oh yeah. And I don't know how, I don't know how someone could do it if they actually cared about them, you know, about that other person. That's a good point. I've never thought about mm -hmm. gauging someone's relationship like that, but that does that does make a lot of sense now that I'm reflecting on other people that I know. It's it's that, that, it's it's in any relationship though. It's not even in like, you know, it's any relationship. It's a push pull push pull if if there's so only one person pushing <laughs> and there's no pulling going on, then one person's going to pull back and say, "No, nah, I'm, I'm cool. See ya." And that always happens. The best relationships are the ones that don't care. They're not measuring the who's did what and you're just like ah whatever i got you you get me we're not keeping track but there's that back and forth right it's never i got you i got you i got you i got you and you're like all right what's going on here i feel like i'm getting taken advantage of now <laughs> well that that's i think that's with the, the boundaries that goes to like uh certain boundaries that you set early that i know guys don't do I've seen a lot of guys especially once they start making good money i guess let's say my age bracket let's say they're they're in the six figures now and they're dating a girl who's like 25. They just spend everything. And then like basically the standard that you set in the very beginning is that I'm a, I'm a credit card for you. And, and th then, you know, the relationship continues and then the boundary, you know, the, not the boundary, the, the standard you set in the beginning was that I'll spend all the money for you. And then, you know, the you, next thing you know, you mm -hmm. get married and she's like spending a lot of money. And then, she, you know, and it, you can't blame her, right? Because then she's thinking, I, I don't understand. You know, when, when we first started dating, you took me to Rockies games, maybe the Nuggets, the Broncos. We were doing all this stuff and you paid for everything. Now that we're married, I'm, I still want to do those things. And now you're saying, no, what gives? And he goes, oh, well, 
you know, he doesn't say this, but in reality, we all know what he was doing. He was trying to impress her with money, mm-hmm. which is a terrible, <laughs> a terrible strategy to gauge <laughs> someone's <laughs> to gauge yeah. compatibility. Yeah. So Andrew, Andrew steps up to the plate, completely strikes out, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> goes back and she's like, I'll still date you. And you're like, you're mine. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Poor guys. I've seen guys do that. No, I look at that and I go, what are you, what are you doing? Why are you doing this? <laughs> like, it doesn't matter who she is. You you tell someone you're going to pay for a, a Broncos game. They're going to go with you. Whether they like you, or they don't. <laughs> Who's yeah. going to turn? I'll go, I'll go with you. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. Um, so yeah, don't do that. Maybe that's another thing too. When you first meet a girl, don't spend a lot of money on her. It's awful. <laughs> the, the secrets that we're, uh, we are divulging here. Uh, to, to get the true. I, and another thing I think that you have to do is you have to go through a difficult time at some point, like, like purposefully do it almost be like, see how she handles it or he handles it. So let's say, um, let's say somebody else says like, Hey, I saw Andrew talking to this other girl. Does she just go crazy and go key your car? Or does she actually say, Hey, Andrew, you know, Hey, Andrew, um, Somebody told me that you were talking to this other girl, and you're like, "Oh yeah, that's uh, that's my coworker that I had to talk to." Right. Oh, and that was my sister, sudden, or your sister, whatever. Right. And all of a sudden, you've got like a keyed up car, and you're like, "What, what the heck was that? Yep. <laughs> like, get out of my life! Get out of here! I don't need that. I, I want it to be simple, plain. And if you don't trust me, then you know you, you should talk about things. It shouldn't just be like, "Oh, he, he's doing something. Let's go key his car. Let's go throw his clothes out." <laughs> In the front yard in the street <laughs> and I go burn yeah, his clothes like in the that, pit. that's uh, that's crazy I, I, I don't deal with crazy well oh no no never crazy is expensive it's crazy expensive there you go crazy crazy is expensive um how, how would how would you know if someone's crazy oh ask your boys <laughs> <laughs> your boys always know <laughs> they just don't say anything because they know you're happy mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm serious. Go straight. Go go to one of your friends. You go to one of your friends who you really like, and and then be like, "Hey, man, what do you think of my girl?" And, and if they say, and you know, I kind of, I, I don't want to say I did this exactly right, but I had a few friends that after they met, uh, my my now wife, who was my girlfriend at the time, they they would straight up text me, go, "Dude, I can't believe how compatible you two are. She's almost, you know." The exact person is you on many things, politically, money, religion, those kinds of things. They're like, wow, that's, inc- I can't believe you found someone just like her. She's awesome. And then I get a text like that after we met. So like, you know, that's reinforcement where I'm going, oh, so she's definitely, you know, if other guys are giving her compliments, then I also know that she's a quote unquote, a catch, right? Now, if, now if the opposite happens, then yeah, I, I think that's a good signal. Mm-hmm. Or if it doesn't happen at all, or if they have nothing to say about your girl, Right. And, or, mm-hmm. or, and if that, if they have nothing to say, then maybe at some point you should go to your friends and you go, Hey man, what do you think of my girlfriend? Is she crazy? Like be completely honest. I don't know what to think. And your, your friends will be honest. they will be like, Hey man, since you started dating this girl, we don't talk. She absorbs all of your time. And if you choose to hang out with us over her, you always end up calling us saying you can't do it. Cause she broke down crying. Hey, that's a problem. You know, she's crazy. <laughs> She's crazy. That's the that's the crazy gauge coming in. That's how I would do it every time. Ask ask your friends because they know. They just don't want to tell you. Yeah, I think it's the hardest when you're the youngest though, because you haven't you don't really know when you're really young. Like you're like 18, 19, 20. Oh yeah. Well at that age, don't, you don't just don't get married. <clears throat> I, I would avoid that. Yeah, but I think a lot of people establish relationships at that age and they may get married later on. So you don't really ever know. You kind of just that's the only one relationship that you know. Yeah, you know, that's a yeah, I know, no, that's a tough one. You might. I I dated someone when I was really young, and she uh, she had like the bank of dad going on, so I could see this in the background where she just kept getting fed money, 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 and I'm like, man, I don't want to be the bank of dad when that transfers over to me. <laughs> <laughs> and like he made a lot of money, so she would get a lot of things. But uh, I did think eventually um, he bought her a house, cash too. So oh. he had a lot of money though. Yeah. But it still wasn't worth it to me. <laughs> oh no, no. They, I mean, is then you're just opening yourself up for the worst thing imaginable. But my dad would. 
And you're like, mm. oh, no. You know, can you imagine that? <laughs> hey, I want that car. No, my dad would buy it for me. And like, you got to hear that every time. Oof. <laughs> yeah, I um, know. What are some other things? What are some like red flags where you're just like, wow, this is uh, not going to work out? I told you the Amazon one. Yeah, well, that's more like a yellow flag, but you is, is, so you're gonna, crazy. So you have to like get their Amazon account, get a hold of it, and just start looking at yeah. all the recent purchases. You're like, oh my goodness, 20 grand. Oh my goodness. Here. Just open, <laughs> open the recycle bin. You'll see all the cardboard packages. Yeah. Oh, her closet. Yeah. Closet's a good one. Um, she, or When it comes to clothes, you know, my wife is huge thrift buyer. She loves thrift purchases, Goodwill or other thrift stores. She loves going over there or getting a good deal. And she's rarely spending on money or spending on, on clothing. So that's a big one. Um, if she's, what about a, you know. What about if you're dating a girl and her car just looks like an absolute mess? The oh, whole inside, well, it looks like, yeah. it looks like a Wendy's garbage or something. <laughs> <laughs> if, she, if she's eating Wendy's, that's your red flag for you right there. <laughs> but let's um, just say the car is like an absolute explosion inside. Yeah, that, that's that? a re- that's a representation of her environment. Mm-hmm. Of every, not not hers, everyone's. Um, that, Everyone, that's, yep. Yep, my my real estate mentor gave me that guidance when it came to uh, finding a renter. He says every time you meet your renter, go meet them at their car and look in their car. Make sure it's clean. If it's not clean, they're not, they're, that's already a red flag. And he says, because the way they treat their car, they're going to treat your house even worse. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, that's a good point. Um, and so I would do the same thing. If she's got, yeah, Wendy's just everywhere, Starbucks, Chick-fil-A, sorry, Starbucks. There's definitely Starbucks everywhere. She gets her morning Starbucks every day and there's just bottles everywhere and it's never clean. Yeah, the, her apartment's going to look like that without a doubt. And then your house is going to look mm-hmm. like that. And then your kids are going to look like that. Yeah, we had a a younger uh, girl that was uh, working at our facility, and she would leave all of her things that she would eat in. Like she'd eat, she'd bring in the little tubbleware or whatever. And she had like 40 of them sitting at her desk. And I'm like, oh. man, this is at work. <laughs> like, you know, how bad is is that? <laughs> it's like the, like the pasta sauce stains yep. <laughs> on the plastic. Yeah, and getting you can never get off. Stuff. Oh, that's, yeah, that's at her crazy. desk. How old was this girl? Crazy. What? How old was she? Twenty-five, six. Right. Yeah, that's like eight. That's like eight-year-old behavior. Oof. There's a lot of kids, uh, twenty-five years old, that I would say are like the mental maturity of like ten years old, ten. But there's a lot. It's not just yeah. this person. I've seen it a whole oh. bunch. I had one uh, one person was in the leadership program. She uh, someone asked her like, "Oh, are you in the intern? Are you an intern or something like that?" And she got all mad. She's like, "I'm a future leader. I'm oh, in the God. leadership program." I'm like, "Avoid her at all costs." Next, <laughs> that it's is just kidding. funny. Like, we had ones where like she would come in at like eight a.m. when you're supposed to be in there like at six. And she's like, oh, I couldn't come to the meeting, but she's holding a Starbucks coffee and we're all looking at it like, well, you had time to get that. Yeah. <laughs> always, it always has time to get that. Well, we're like, <laughs> we're not stupid here. We can see stuff and figure stuff out. I mean, it's, uh, not too hard. <laughs> That's a good one. Yeah. Which one? But, but that one, the Starbucks coffee, she mm-hmm. always shows up with one. She'll late, late to the meeting, but shows up with one. That's common. Yeah. Uh, my my team right now is heavily male, so I'm not exposed to that kind of stuff as often. But um, the one female coworker I work very closely with, she's really good. Mm-hmm. I don't I have very little complaints about her. But but you can tell. Oh, I guess that's a good example too. So you got to gauge what you want and recognize that you probably can't change her. Um, one example of that is you know if you're dating a girl and she's like, yeah, I've got ambitions to be partner at the law firm. Uh, CEO director by my age 40 or whatever. And you're the kind of guy thinking, well, I kind of want to get married and have kids and have a pretty stable family life. You're not, I don't think you're not going to change her, man. I tell that to some of the guys that I know too, who who come back to me, they'll, they'll say things like, Oh, she's a, you know, she, she's thinking about getting her PhD. I'm like, I thought you said she wanted kids. 
yeah, she wants kids too. I'm like, man, that's, that's hard to balance. That, that is, you know, you, mm -hmm. you're, you want both. You, sometimes you got to pick one. And so I would look. You're, you're in the camp that uh, you can't have it all. Oh, absolutely not. No, <laughs> no one can. Yeah. Yep. But, but you see that. I see it all the time. You, you kind of have to pick one. Um, so that, that's another one I would say, you know, like, like, and that, that, and, oh, and all of this again, for the guy, the single guys out there in their twenties, you got to find this out with some interpersonal tact, right? Be, be tactical about how you discover these things. Don't, <laughs> like I said, with the original comment I made earlier, right? Don't be so like socially inept about how you discover these things. You can have nice conversations that slowly open these boxes. You can be quote unquote romantic about it and are charming is probably a better way of putting it. You find these things out You because everyone loves talking about themselves. You just ask questions. And, and next thing you know, you hear someone say, yeah, I think, I think having kids in my late thirties will be a good time for me. And then you, you know, and then if you're a kind of guy where you're like, I kind of wanted to have a kid starting in my like late twenties, then, you know, I mean, Hey, there's a very little chance of changing that um, if she's that determined. There's another thing to watch out for. Uh, this is this could be a little bit more deeper. So let's say she passes the car test. She's got a clean car. <laughs> we you find out other things. She doesn't really have debt or whatever. But what if she comes from a family that's like financially ruined? Like mm. like they have they're they're on drugs. They've got problems. Would you get involved with? her if she comes from a family that has those problems i would say i, I would avoid it's too much uh work. yeah that's i i want to give some people the benefit of the doubt with that one but of the people i have known that have risked those kinds of relationships it doesn't work that much and, and the worst part is like even if she knows Right. She goes, this is the childhood I grew up with. I hated all these things. And because of that, I'm never going to turn that way because of that I'm going to be the complete opposite. I'm going to be a saver. I'm going to avoid everything. Even a drop of alcohol. I'm never going to touch it. I won't even have caffeine because caffeine is a drug to me. And she avoids all those things. There are so many like tra that's so much childhood trauma that's built into those things that she doesn't even know about or he, well, I think it's that matter. I think it's deeper than that because if you don't have a good relationship with your family and you kind of break yourself off from the family, then you're going to have a different relationship with your kids too and how you oh. raise your kids. And then you're going to have the parents wanting to come and see your kids and raise your kids and help do this and help do that. And I'm just like, oh God, they're going to instill whatever values they have over there onto your, you know, project them onto your kids and project them to whatever. And they're mm -hmm. going to see that as well. Your kids will see it and be around it. Uh, and be exposed to it. Oh, that's a great it's point. Difficult. Yeah, that mm -hmm. that's probably something I, that was unexpected to me when I when I got married was how much uh how much additional time I've been spending with my in laws, and I like my in laws, like, mm -hmm. but I never realized screening that is a big deal. That you spend way more time being with your in laws, especially if they live nearby, mm -hmm. um, or 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 brother in law, sister in law, cousins. Right. You, you literally do marry into a family, mm -hmm. but, but, you know, guys, guys don't do that. They, they look at a girl. She goes, Oh, she's hot. And I, and I kind of get along with her. She's the one mm -hmm. <laughs> she can go, you know, debt, crazy family debt, no money, those kinds of things. But uh, a kids will stress a relationship as well. And I know, I don't think you have any yet. So no, the, the, they'll stress things that you didn't know were there because right now you've all the time in the world. It's all free. You can do whatever you want. And then she has all the time in the world. It's all free. You can do whatever you want. And then when you have one kid, you can kind of pass him, pass him or her back and forth. You've got multiple kids. Now you're farly, you know, far outnumbered. You've got three or four and you're <laughs> outnumbered. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There's like no handoffs. There's no passing off as much. Uh, it's kind of like a full-time job for everybody. So the stress in the relationship goes up. And then you'll see what happens, you know, 
after that, it, it'll, it'll all come out, so to speak. Uh, and then if you have kids and you're going to bring them to whatever family, then they're going to start getting the values and whatever from their family or whatever family they're around. They'll be like, Oh, that's okay. Oh, it's okay to do this. Oh, my, you know, this family where let's just say they're rough and they're kind of whatever. And like their kids are like, you know, slashing tires and stuff. And now your kids are like, I want to slash tires. Let's go slash yeah. some tires. And all of a sudden, you know, you're the car that got, has to slash tires. And you're like, man, I got to pay for new tires. And my kids are the ones learning how to slash tires. Like this is a double negative here. <laughs> it's, you know, it, it's, it's hard because you're going to have to figure out a way to balance what the values of whatever that family has, because the values that transferred through that family into your wife or yourself or whatever will transfer into your kids. And if you don't want your kids to act that way and, and have an outlook on life or a paradigm on life that way, you have to figure out a way to make sure that whoever you're marrying or being with has values that you also are aligned with. Uh, and then you're going to transfer all that to the kids, you know, like, is it okay for them to do X? Is it okay? I mean, it's the little stuff, you know, the little stuff is what's going to get you frustrated. It's not the big thing. It's not like, your kid growing up and being a Democrat or Republican, which you may or may not have an impact on or an influence over right. uh, completely, but it's like little stuff. Like, is it okay to throw, you know, toys at the wall? You know, for me, it's no, but if your wife's like, I don't care, whatever. And then all your, your kids go to your parents' house and they're all chucking toys at the, at the wall. You're like, Oh God, not this again. <laughs> you're, like, you're like, no, don't do this it's okay to do if I do it over there, you know, and you get in that whole thing going back and forth. So I know I chose something real small and minute, but there could be bigger things uh, that are brewing. If you don't, you know, find someone that's somewhat aligned. You're not yeah, going to be a hundred percent. No, yes. no, absolutely not. But the kids are sponges. They just absorb their entire environment. So if the yes. environment is chaotic and the mom and dad can't agree, then the kids are going to be chaotic because they don't know what's right or wrong what's yes well maybe not right or wrong but appropriate or inappropriate behavior or where the boundaries are yep boundaries, and, boundaries how right and, yeah, mm -hmm. and how to respect them yeah and how to respect them i think um somebody said um never allow your kids to do something that will make you hate them never allow uh, them to do it yeah because then you can't end up hating your kids <laughs> <laughs> hey yeah, yeah. You know? that's, that's a good point <laughs> so don't let them do it no, we'll, what else we'll probably, we'll experience that we soon enough, I'm sure. Um, oh, because you mentioned about kids. Here's, here's another one, too. Um, I use a, a friend of mine as an example. He won't be named, but his wife, um, big spender, big spender on herself. She cares about appearances. She cares about appearances for herself. She cares about appearances in terms of her house, the car she drives. She even cares about her appearance of her husband, right? So they have three kids. What does that look like with the children? Well, she obviously cares about the appearance. Like everyone cares about the appearance of their family, but I'm talking about like over the top. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, if I was watching her kids every six months get a new set of designer clothes because they outgrew the old ones. I'm talking like expensive stuff. Like, you know, mm -hmm. you're going to Macy's and, and, you know, pairs of shoes that are 80 bucks for a three year old who's going to outgrow it in less than a year. Well, I know. You, you, yeah, I, I, here's one thing. And I know it, it ties to that, but it doesn't tie to that. Um, there's a person at my work. She's mid thirties, probably a little, like, I would guess a little younger than myself. And she, uh, she has two kids, I think two or maybe three, I think it's two, but she works all the time, like all the time. And I know her kids go to daycare and I know that her husband also used to work there. So I know he makes good money too. My question is, how much do you love your kids if you openly choose a, 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 I'll call it a, a, a career path over your kids? Like that just seems to me like that's just, I don't know. To me, it's, it, it's unacceptable to me. And I know I'm like treading a fine line here, but yeah, because you're in the minority I, these days. Yeah. But I, I would not find it acceptable to find the lowest cost child care or even close to an affordable child care person where they could allow your kids to sit in their own crap for a couple hours. 
before getting their diaper changed or whatever, so that you can make a teeny bit more money for I don't know what's upside gain if the guy already makes a really good wage. I don't understand why you would do that. Like it, it doesn't make sense. Like I would value the kid and their their I, I would say everything happens in a kid's life in the first five years. Like everything. It's from zero to five. Zero to five is basically what shapes their entire life. Mm-hmm. And what you're doing is you're taking the majority of their waking moments and saying, I'm going to go throw them in from zero to zero to four, zero to three, zero to five. I'm going to go put them in with someone that I don't know that probably has the lowest cost and have them for my kids. And I'm like, why would you do that? If you're that smart, if you're that driven, if you're that whatever, why would you throw your kids and have them raised by the this this person making 12 or 13 or 15 or $20 an hour? And, and, and you're at work just so you can go spend a little bit more money uh, or have a little bit bigger house. That just seems absolutely retarded to me because you're basically putting all priorities over your kids. Now, when your kids are growing up and they're sitting there and they're really small and they're, they're sitting there and they're looking around and they're like, well, where's mommy? Where's daddy? Oh, well, no, we've got Jerry over here. Uh, the subway. Jerry. <laughs> Jerry oh, the no. subway. <laughs> <laughs> And and he's gonna watch me, and I'm like, who the hell is Jerry? Like, <laughs> you, you know. So your kids are all confused. They're like, well, mommy just drops me off for like eight hours or ten hours, and I get to chill with this with Jerry uh, for for the majority of my waking hours. And I go home, and she's all stressed out. Yep. You know, so I I don't I don't know I don't get it. So I wanted one of the things that I wanted was a I wanted a mom that was going to put the priorities on the kid and not on herself and that the finance, the, the finances shouldn't flow to her. It should flow to the kids. Yeah. And, and their well being and their happiness because everything happens in zero to five. And if you want to have kids and everything happens from zero to five, then don't you want your kids to be successful in life? And the most, the, the, the most important time of their lives is when they're small, young and that they're being held They're They're not sitting in their crap. They've got people playing with them and they can get their eye-hand coordination. Maybe it's, you know, tackling them. So they like get their coordination and, and their balance and all that stuff going. And then you rough house them and whatever. And then they know where the limit of that is. They know where to not do it. They know how to play. They know how to get integrated, like all that stuff. It all matters. Right. And then, and then everyone else, you know, I'll just, I'll just throw my kid over here. It's like, then why'd you have a kid? Like, I don't understand it, especially mm-hmm. if you have the means to not do it. Like I, it, it just, I have a very different outlook on that person for doing that. It's like, why would you do that? I don't, I don't know. It's, it's social pressure. That's what my wife says is when we have kids, she's going to stay home. She says yeah, that and I'm not, the script has I'm not flipped. Trying to, I'm not trying to project my values onto anyone else, but to some extent, I don't know if they understand the psychological impacts of doing that. That's like saying, I'm going to go have a dog, but I'm going to go kick it and, and throw it in the backyard and never say anything to it. It's like, well, why do you have a dog then? And there's a lot of families that do that. Oh, I just want to have a dog. And you're like, well, you don't even do anything with it. You don't play with it. You don't hug it. You don't do anything. You just throw it in the backyard. You don't like comb it, get all the crap out of its hair. And, you know, like like there's some sort of upkeep and maintenance to it and maintaining that relationship. But I don't know. I, it's just things that I notice. And I, I look at some people and I'm just like, why would you do this? And I can tell uh, even through family members who put their kids into daycare and put their kids into whatever. And they're not happy. They, they bark at their kids whenever and their kids act incredibly different than other kids. And you can kind of tie it to how they grew up. And it's not just one of the kids. It's like all of them. So well, if you're a product of your environment through age zero through five, and most of your environment is a chaotic daycare pen of st- strangers, you don't know in a revolving door of children and kids and employees and you get no stability yep. and you're going to be a chaotic teenager mm-hmm. that kind of makes sense but that's that's what i see and that's what i know and so you're gonna if, if you want kids you have to like really figure out if if that's what she wants too and how oh, yeah. you're going to handle that before you do anything yep yeah I, which is I, a tough one yeah because now because now, remember you were here and we were like down to here that that what you just brought up 
we're, we're in between you. the lines now <laughs> with zero. <laughs> like opening opening that conversation up with anyone these days brings you down to here. Yeah, I that asked the hardest um, one. There was a female at work. She was I don't know twenty something years later twenties, and I can't. She made a comment, and I was like, "Really? Is that what you think?" And she thinks that she can have everything, and and I'm like, "I don't know. I think it's going to be real hard." All right. I got another one. This, this, here's a good story too. Had a coworker on my deployment and, uh, she had a mug that she'd walk around with and it said like dog mom on it. So then I asked her, I was like, I didn't know you had a dog. And she goes, Oh, I don't. I just found this mug in some random care package that we got. I thought it was funny. So I'd started, you know, using it for coffee or pencils. I, I can't remember what she was using it for. Then I joked mm-hmm. and I was like, Oh, okay. Well, do you actually want a dog? Do you like pets? And she goes, oh, yeah, I love dogs. And I do want a dog, but just not right now. And I go, why not? Well, me and my husband, you know, we both want to retire out of the Air Force. So we're both going to do 20 years. So after that, maybe we'll get a dog. But right now we're too busy for a dog. And I go, didn't you tell me you wanted kids? Yeah, I want kids. And I thought about that. I was like, you know, I was kind of waiting for it to set in. The, the, mm-hmm. the strange, you know, conflict that she just said about, I don't have time for a dog, but I can somehow have time for children, but at the same time still work a full retirement out of the air force. Mm -hmm. It it didn't click. I waited and I was like, you don't have time for a dog, but you have time for children. She was like, yep. Yeah. It just never set in. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I've seen, I've seen it like that before too. You can have it all. And hopefully, uh, hopefully we're not offending too many people here. Cause uh, yeah, I know we have a lot of guys, I guess, male viewers versus uh female but i i i don't know i mean maybe you could pull it off i don't know how you can pull off having a a a very uh well brought up kid from zero to five and not be present i just don't know how that could work i i mean the guy could be present the dad but yeah 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 uh, all right grandma grandpa i know some people all do that two working parents but grandma's around and she's there full time I've seen that a few times, but, but that, that, again, that's the minority. It's usually I have my kids and I find the cheapest daycare because we don't make a lot of money. We throw them in there and then we pick them up at five o'clock. Yep. You see it in the there military was, a lot. There was one daycare around here and actually one of our neighbors put their kids in it and they were, the person was locking kids in the basement because you can only have so many kids for whatever Oh, this person had more, so they would like lock them in and like put them in the back room. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, I know, I know what you're talking about. My mom, my mom has a, stuff. yeah, she she's worked in that um field before. It's mm-hmm. something like they measure the square footage of your area, and because of that, you can have ten kids or twelve kids or whatever. And if you get inspected by the state, and if they find thirteen kids, you'll get in trouble, lose yep. your license or whatever it is. It's something like that. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Yeah, you never know. How would you know? You know, she's got the person running the daycare has the credentials, has the permits, has X, Y, Z, A, W, X, five stars on Google, but any of that could happen at any moment and you would never know. Yep. yep. But that's, that's all I've, that's all I've got. I don't know if you have anything else, Andrew, if you'd like to share. Um, I, I would say it's tough. And I think the best thing you can do is just, find a guy a little bit older than you who's been through this and ask him if you respect his marriage. If you look at him, he goes, he's happy. His wife adores him. They have the same value system. Just go consult with that guy in your life. That's probably the best thing you can do. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's all I've got. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Hopefully we didn't defend too many people. (laughs) You, you always do. You'll, you'll yeah. at least get one, one negative comment every video. <laughs> yeah, it's good. Got to keep that going on. So, um, yeah, that's all I've got. Uh, you know, Andrew, thanks for coming on and giving your opinion yep. about this. I know you wanted to, um, to talk about it, and I'm open to talk about it, too, because I think it's a huge topic that a lot of people glaze over, especially when they're younger, uh, maybe even older, too. Um, I know people who have been in financial ruin over the person that they got with. Yep. Boy, girl, girl, boy, it doesn't matter. Uh, they could be alcoholics they could be um people who get addicted to drugs they just steal all their wealth and it just walks right out the door uh with the person and it's real hard to recover 
uh, from that. And it can also be negative things from, you know, from divorce and other things that get settled. And if you have a kid and then you have child payments, even though you may still love the kid, sometimes it flows to the, the wrong person. It doesn't flow to the kid. It flows to the mom and they use it on everything, not the kid. So there's a lot of, a lot of bad things that could happen. Yep. And so, it's just this negative feedback loop that just mm-hmm. spirals and spirals and then you get filled with hate more and more. And then, and then guess what happens? All that hate you have for your kid's mom, you start expressing to the kid, the kid goes back and then the mom starts expressing all the hate for the dad and the kids absorbing that one. And the kids going between both parents, just going, wow, they, I mean, I guess I'm supposed to hate everybody. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like, yeah, it's just, it's rough for the kid. All right. Well, that's all I've got. Thanks for coming on, Andrew. Really appreciate yeah. it. And so t- I know it's a tough topic that some people find uh, offensive, but I'm, I'm okay with it, that. It's it needs, the most it important to topic. Out. It's probably the most important topic you can think about when it comes to investments. Yep. All right, guys. Well, thanks for making it to the end. Um, uh, say in the comments section, if you found the one, write in the comments, I found the one. Uh, if you haven't found the one, write something else. Say like a uh, single ready to mingle. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, that's what I've got for today, guys. Uh, appreciate it. Uh, we'll catch you next time. Thanks for coming on, Andrew. Yeah.